Hello everyone and welcome back. We are in our last week, full week of the PSS4. Uh, I am Michael Hoyp. I'm joined by BK Brian Coel. How's it going, BK? It's going great. I'm having a, having a great day. Just yeah. watched the uh, watch a really nice red on red match. Yeah. Which I always love watching those. Yeah, I was say like I think if there's a sly if I want to see play, like sly uh play, I like the mirror. I think it's really interesting. Um, so, uh, we will not see a slide beer in this matchup. We have Ryan Grodzinski against Christian Weisner. Neither of these players have brought Sly. Uh, so if you're a red fan, it's, it's not what we're going to see right now, but there's still going to be a lot of fun magic. So, uh, let's jump down to the decks to see what they have available for them. Yeah. But I know what they have. So Ryan, his three decks are the Tradewind Survival deck, the Enchantress, and then Stasis. His Enchantress deck is banned for this round. Right. And then Christian has brought Blue-Red Stifle Knot, a Red-Green Goblins, and then The Rock. And his Blue-Red Stifle Knot has been banned. So Ryan's looking at either bringing Tradewind Survival or Stasis. And then Christian has the option of Red-Green Goblins or The Rock. Uh... So, uh, chat's hey, telling me that you're too quiet. Let me try and... I'm too quiet? Yeah. Uh, oh. I don't know if I can boost him up at all. Is there anything on your end you can speak a little louder, BK? Is this any better? Um, I'll have to wait for, for chat to better. say anything. Does sound louder? I can try <laughs> one thing. I don't I know if I can move this... my screen closer to me. I can put headphones on. I can, uh... Google Dance. Oh, someone said that they think you're just too far from the mic. Yeah, okay. I'm, uh, I'll lean in. <laughs> so, someone said maybe if your mic was in the same room. <laughs> oh. They, yeah. Uh, so, okay. So, Ryan has Trader and Survival and Stasis, and then Christian has Red or Green Goblins or The Rock. Do you want to make a prediction on what you think they're going to bring? I think that um, I think Ryan will bring Stasis. <laughs> Okay. And I think that Christian is gonna bring goblins. Okay. Now your like, now your volume came in, so I th I think okay. I probably can hear you a lot better. So what do you think? Uh, well, I know because um, the, the players tell me what they're bringing, so I can set things up. Uh, but if I were just to think on both ends, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I feel like I would. I don't know if this. I like stasis a lot, but I would be a little bit worried about like a turn one lackey kind of thing and yeah. things going crazy. <laughs> so I might, I, I, though I don't know if the trade, I mean, the trade one survival has like walls and stuff to block. So I'm not yeah. sure. Um, I think I might bring trade one survival if I were Ryan, but. See, I, I think trade one survival, I wouldn't really want to play it against rock and I don't think I'd really want to play it against um, goblins either. Okay. Because the sharpshooter. But. Right. I, I guess know. yeah. I guess pernicious deed also is kind of problematic for the trade win survival deck. So, all right, uh, let's. Ryan jump. is a big believer in the trade wins. So. Yes. So let's see. Ryan has gone with stasis. So the mono blue prison. He's gonna ruin someone's day, and he's hoping that day that he's ruining is Christian. So the what this deck tries to do basically like the soft lock or I don't I mean like if you have stasis and then um, forgotten sit. Forsaken City, uh, you're able to, instead of paying mana, you're able to remove a card from your hand to pay for the stasis. And then eventually you get to the point where you're countering spells, drawing cards, and then like kill them with a black vice. Um, yeah, I think this deck is super solid, and I, I think it's actually a little bit underplayed in pre-modern. I think it's yeah. very, very powerful. Quietly, I think this is like one of the best decks in the format, and uh, people are kind of sleep it i th I think part of it is like the stigma of playing it nobody you know if you play this deck you're not gonna win any popularity contests because people just hate losing the stasis it's because yeah. it's just like kind of takes a factor of the game away from you, you know? yeah um, yeah i do i do feel like it does have like that stigma and um yeah it's it's not as popular as i think is is for how good it is but uh we will see how ryan does he will be up against the rock from christian so we could talk uh, a little bit about Christian's version and maybe talk about you about some of the differences because you also brought uh, the rock to this tournament, though your lists are, uh, I mean, I don't know if significance is the right word, but like there are some card changes that are different. So Pretty uh, different, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, he's, Christian... kinda, he's more a lot more classic, I would say. Okay, what do you like about Christian, and is there anything that you don't like as much? I like Christian because he's a he's a nice okay, guy. Okay, okay. yeah. <laughs> who seems to have like a cool collection of figures. Um, what I like, I like, so I, I like all, I like a lot of versions of the rock, you know, I, I like, I played a really different one, but I kind of played mine because I thought there might be a lot of combo, you know, and also a lot of dreadnought. And that's like one of the reasons I went with, um, Mesmeric Fiend. Cause like, if you can steal your opponent's dreadnought, you like are way ahead compared to like, if you dress, if you dress the, the dreadnought decks, I, I found that not to be so great. Cause all the cards are the same that are not dreadnoughts, you know? Um, so that's a reason why I, I went with Fiend myself. Um, but I like, like, this is more of a classic rock build. He's just trying to like, you know, hit their hand early, take, disrupt their strategy, and then hopefully their four fours and five fives will get through and, and win mm -hmm. the game. You know, and that's, that's a good place to be. Yeah. That... I, I, I've come around a lot more to that. Okay. So, uh, we'll see how mm -hmm. it works out in this matchup. I mean, I guess... Uh, the cards that like will, will interact really well. Pernicious Deed is a card that's pretty interesting that you can play first and like uh, preemptively answer a, a stasis. Uh, the duresses and cobalt therapies can be problematic to get through counter spells and whatnot. And then beyond that, like they just had to find a way to to pressure the stasis deck, which I guess is kind of almost the biggest issue with with this list is like it it's not super aggressive. And there's not like a, a great way to, to pressure a stasis deck. So we'll see if, if all the pieces come together for Christian to, to beat yeah. them on a blue prison. I, I would call the rock versus stasis matchup to be like always scary. You know, it's it, you're you never feel comfortable playing it. It's just always like at any point if I make one miss one slight bad move, it's could just all get locked out for me for the rest of the, the game. So it'll be fun to see if how Christian navigates it. All right, uh, let's jump down to the match if you want to let our players know that we can begin. And we will get things started on the Stasis versus the Rock. Looks like Christian has Mulligan to six, and then Ryan yeah. Mulligan to five. So again, the, the frowny face. I feel like uh, Ryan has brought this guy before, so some unfortunate luck where he had to go to five cards. So Yeah, he, he seems like he's run bad in a lot of these matches, and... He had a hurricane at his house. So this is like as as bad as you can run in the TSS. But I, I don't I like I like I like Ryan's decks and uh it's been it's been really cool watching him play. Mm -hmm. And talking about his decks. I've talked to him a bunch during the I think I told him they could play. Um All right. As you send I'll try message. messaging one of them individually. Okay. But let me know if they start. Oh no, they didn't say. You didn't tell them. Uh, I did. It's not. I in said the... you. I said you may begin. No, in what chat room? <laughs> did, in the PSS four one. No, I, I think you. I didn't see it in there. So. Okay. <laughs> you but you might have told some other people that they could start. So. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Now you just call me crazy, Britain. <laughs> uh, well, I don't see my chat coming through on my desktop, so I don't know. Maybe there's some issues maybe, with Messenger. Maybe, I'm, maybe Messenger isn't working. That, that might be the issue. But... For me. Like, I don't know. Uh, I'll, Facebook I'll try. hasn't been the most consistent lately for yeah. me. <laughs> Let's see. Uh... All right. Uh... All right, but now we got things going. <laughs> yeah, I, okay, I, I don't see my yeah, message I, have I gone through either. I think it just didn't so. go through. I definitely typed it in there. Yep, all right. All right. So first turn birds, and then a first turn island, and then a second turn dress. Uh, oh, now, now, now our messages are coming through. So. Yeah. Now, now it looks like we're just like, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Get going, slow pokes. Yeah. So we do see a hand of impulse, two dazes, arcane denial, and stasis. Uh, there is only one land. Um, he takes a stasis. I think stasis. Yep. So not a. I mean, obviously Ryan Mulligan to five, but without a second land, he's going to be waiting for a long time. Though, 
Christian doesn't have any pressure, really. I guess Mishra's factory is a little bit, but... Yeah. He's going to have to tap out for a lot of things that don't really impact Ryan mm -hmm. in any way. So that can... Uh... Like I said, it's always scary. <laughs> Are you saying a wall of blossoms doesn't impact Ryan? <laughs> no. Um, the big the big card for Christian is Wall of Roots. Okay. That card can just uh, let him do all kinds of great things against a Stasis deck. I think his list has fewer of them, though, if I remember right. I think he might have two. I, I, I don't remember, yeah, if, if what the card counts were of it. But... Um... I don't think he plays it at all. Actually. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's so that's uh, that's not a resource he'll have available to him. Yeah, the the wall of roots is really good because uh, you're able to have access to mana without um, that basically untaps under a, a stasis lock. We, we do see blast arm, and with it resolved, like this is pretty much just 15 damage unless a stasis. Like stasis, I think is the only card that would interact with it because chain of vapor is. Pretty much the other one that if interaction pieces once cards resolved, but with the shroud it's it's gonna attack three times. Do you, do you daze the bird here? <laughs> the only thing you can do. Yeah, I basically all Christian needs to do is just like deal five extra points of damage, like and he's got a treetop village and a Mishra's factory. Yeah. So I think if he gets it on this turn, um Chain of Vapor won't be able to hit the the activated lands. And I have a hard time seeing Ryan coming out of this one, actually. Yeah. Interestingly, if if Ryan had a stasis and would like would have drawn for Second City, it's very likely he could have like locked. Okay, I guess I I didn't consider that. Just like having stasis and a land yeah. um, would yeah, but... would prevent and is obviously very good against a blast arm with fading. So yeah. the deck but... can really lock out of nowhere. Christian's mm -hmm. uh, deck is really set up to like hit that clock. From turn five on, like, or turn or, or when at the turn after four mana gets hit, because he has like lots of man lines in his deck and lots of blast arms and all that stuff. All right, Ryan gets an island. He's not out of it yet. He still could possibly put some stuff together here. Um, yeah, I think it really has to be Forsaken City and Stasis. Yeah. He's going to get to Impulse at the end of Christian's turn and then uh, untap and maybe, maybe, maybe do mm -hmm. something. <laughs> oh, but he, I mean, he's got 10 right here since the lands are attacking again. Yeah, what it adds up to. All right. Yeah, I guess so. Um, the Rhino. I, I'm trying to think what cards he has. It, it, he might have a here. boomerang. Boomerang? Gosh. Boomerang is the only card because Chain of Vapor is non land, so. Unless I'm mistaken. Two blue, gushing. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, just, it's just a shortcut to him uh, actually scooping. That's. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, unfortunate for the, the stasis. Really I don't. It, it almost sounds like an oxymoron if you say unfortunate for the stasis player, but yes. Um, it is unfortunate that he uh, had to mulligan to five and w wasn't getting his mana. So let's look at sideboards to see if things change for either of these players. I have the stasis deck. So the sideboard, two Tormod's Crypt, two Annul, a Felden's Cane, a Black Vice, a Hydroblast, a Curse Totem, three Chill, or four Chill, two Null Rod, and Ensnare. So a Null interacts with Pernicious Deed. Um, Curse Totem could shut down... Birds of Paradise, I guess without Wall of Roots, I don't think it does enough. There's not uh, as much, yeah. Ensnare is actually fine. Snare's uh, super good, I think. Yeah. I could see Ensnare coming in. I'd be a, uh, I'd be a buyer on Ensnare. <laughs> are, there, are there any cards you think that underperform in the main? In Stasis? Yeah. Um... I, don't, I, I mean, say... it seems like every card's fine. Yeah, it's kind of so. Stasis to me is like it's a lot like these Dreadnought decks, in that you just like almost all the cards do the same thing. Um, okay. I think um, Days is probably might. I mean, normally I would say Days isn't the greatest against uh, the Rock with Wall of Blossoms and all that, but against this list, I I think I like it a lot. Yeah, I um, mean, especially if you're able to get like a Ravenous Bailoth or a Blasted Derm, it's like really good. Yeah, I think. 
I think I could shave up the word, you know, like I, I'd probably just shave cards more than like counterspell might not be like it in this, like you, you might just like be upgrading. I think Arcane Denial is, a, is the better counterspell for him in this matchup yeah. and that counterspell um, could, could get upgraded to a better, better things. Which cyber cards are you the most excited about? Like is Ensnare um, the most exciting? Like no, nothing like yeah, really jumps out at me. To, he does not have to do much to his, his deck. Um, I think it's Snare and Cursed Totem are the big ones, but I, man, I don't even know if I bring in Cursed Totem five times. I think I agree with you. Do you have any um, interest in Anul, or is that too narrow? I think I don't bring in Anul against the Rock, because okay. I think I'd be taking out, probably taking out Counterspell or Thwart for them, and those are almost as good in, sure. in most situations. All right. I'll bring up Christian's list. So he has three Natural Eyes. That one certainly could be a role player. A Dust Bowl, a Bone Shredder, a Withered Wretch, a Plague Spitter, a Spike Peter, three Engineered Plagues, a Duress, a Genesis, a Braids, and a Spirit Monger. So I'm looking at Duress and three Natural Eyes. I think those are the cards that jump out to me initially. I think Braids is super exciting. Okay. Um, I guess cards that go out, like Vendetta and Smother. There's one Vendetta and two Smothers. Those don't have any targets against Orion, right. so... Those would come out. Diabloch Edict as well. So there's at least four cards. Um, I yeah, think, I think probably I'd... his his bigger threats. You know, like I I don't know if you want Drain Hermit against him. I think Grave Ward Muse is almost like a liability, like because it might just kill you quicker, and it's like bad against the Black Vices. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that I might be a card. That. Like might bring in Braids just for that. Uh, though I guess like sometimes. With the he has two living wish, so it's not like he has four. But I would say like sometimes a card, one card in the sideboard has more value staying there than bringing yeah. in the main. I think he might. I think I would maybe take out the living wishes. Okay. Um, if I like, I would bring in that dust bowl too because I you just want to hit land drops against stasis. You wouldn't want to miss well, them at all. Like hitting it um, and hitting an uh forsaken city is very good too. Yeah, I think if I were Christian, I'd be taking out vendetta, two smother, two living wish. And the Diabolic Edict. So those um, six cards. And I'd be bringing in the three Natural Eyes, the Dust Bowl, um, the Duress, and the Braids. Right. I don't know. That's that's where I'd be at. I yeah. might I might switch the Spirit Monger for the um, Drain Hermit. Like it might just be a better clock. You know, okay. you could you could do some some fine tune things like that, but. I guess uh, Plague Spitter is interesting because it's a, a a ongoing source of damage. Sure, that doesn't like doesn't doesn't need to attack. Yeah, but, but it might just be too crappy for his, the rest of his stuff. <laughs> play, players were asking if uh, they can start. I think we're relying on uh, visual cues as compared to Facebook. We've moved on. So uh, I think Christian had Mulligan once. I think I saw him put a card on the bottom. And Ryan's going to start things off with an island and a pass, and Christian has a turn one duress. Never good to see if you're stasis. Yeah. One thing that's interesting about the discard spells is I think sometimes against stasis you want to... Not saying it's wrong to play it on turn one, but like there are often times you want to wait and cast it later to like try and tie up their mana for counter spells. Yeah. Uh, we see a hand of counter spell, foil, chain of vapor, island, island, stasis, and stasis is selected again. I think when they're on the draw, though, you just want to get your dresses out there. And yeah. he, he very likely has a Cabal Therapy here, right? Yeah, and just having the knowledge allows you to kind of, like, play around things better, and then you can use that. Like, if this foil stays in hand or this Chain of Vapor stays in hand, then you're able to Cabal Therapy at a different point and play yeah. all these turns knowing this information as compared to that kind of Yeah, I do that. like waiting with my Cabal Therapies against Stasis because often that can... End up like sitting for a long time. I think chain might be the right pick here. Um, well, it looks like it's probably gonna get counter spelled, so I don't think there's, I don't think I would, unless you really want to resolve a spell right here, I think I would just wait on the Cabal Therapy flashback. What well, Christian is that? <laughs> I'm, what are you are you taking the foil or are you taking chain of vapor what what are you interested of 
taking so quickly? Um, I'm not sure. I think. I guess he's going for the foil. Okay. Ryan's picked up the Forsaken City, which is a, a very key card for him. So it allows him to just really go very aggressive with, with his play before playing the stasis. So he can just tap out for stasis. If you yeah, because if, if we get to a point where there's no Forsaken City and you have to play stasis, then they can just play draw go, and Ryan has to pay a mana every turn. But with the, yeah. the Forsaken City, he's able to instead just use a card in his hand and... in near indefinitely pay for the stasis. Yes. Um, Ryan's hand, it's totally stripped, and but Christian can't really uh, take advantage of it because he's stuck on two lands here. Mm -hmm. Looks like Ryan's going to gush in response. And that's a little kind of a strange play. I, think, I, would, I would expect Christian to just name Chain of Vapor there. Yeah, um, I guess it's only really bad if you draw more Chain of Vapors, right? Yeah. Actually, I mean, like, at that point, maybe you would name... Oh, he named Stasis. Okay, I was going to say, maybe you would name Stasis after the gush, but... Um... All right, so two Stasis down, two to go. <laughs> and that was a Stasis that was hard cast. Mm -hmm. I guess that's one thing to know. Or not a Stasis, that was a gush. Um, yeah. Not Islands were not returned. He did bring in the ensnare. So he's, his hand is gush and snare chain of vapor. It's gushing. Like if Ryan is not seeing any pressure, is he incentivized or less incentivized to uh, like play an early stasis, or do you think it like it I doesn't think so. with I the think he can wait. I mean, doesn't Christian does have the the Cabal Therapy in his yard, but I don't see a big reason to pull the trigger. I'm no stasis expert. Another therapy. All the therapies. Would you name Chain of Vapor and Snare or a different card? Um, I think I would name Chain. I think Chain's pretty great. I think so too. He got a second copy, so it's a second one. Ryan just left with nothing but an ensnare in hand. Yep. So I'd be like, uh, Ryan's hand is not strong, but Christian's board presence is pretty poor as well. So, right. Okay, he's got third land, so I don't I can't think of. Okay, deed is is a, a not necessarily a threat, but a, definitely an answer, and like it makes things difficult, especially with two chain of vapors gone, like. That is a sequence you see sometimes is like they try and deed and then you chain of vapor your own stasis in response. Yeah. He's gonna gush again. Yeah, if he played stasis, the the one problem is if like if he just deployed a stasis right here, is if Christian just went like land land which obviously doesn't have land in his hand but like yeah. if if ryan doesn't have like a black vice then the game's going to go on for a long time and eventually christian's going to draw two land and he just has the answer on board for, mm -hmm. for the stasis he does have a black vice so uh christian's got yeah. five cards in hand so he'll take a damage uh it looks like six i think he drew a six it, okay Yeah, the so, early vice would have done a ton of damage. Yeah, if if that vice came out a lot earlier, then this game would be very maybe different. maybe Ryan brings in the fourth vice here because they are very capable of getting destroyed. That's true. We see a second deed. Okay, okay. that protects him from a chain of vapor potentially. I mean, uh, Christian's incentivized to try try and get cards out of his hand because of the black vice. Though I guess he could. I mean, I, who do you think it like is Ryan happy if 
a pernicious deed is used in a blackface? Maybe. Maybe that's an exchange he's okay with. Yeah, I think he is. But I don't think Christian's going to do that. He will gladly take a point of damage for a while. This is, yeah, not looking too great for Ryan, I think. There's always hope when your opponent is stalling mana for this one. We do see the right, plague, plague spitter. There he is. Little potato. <laughs> Pokey potato, they call him that. <laughs> All right. He's going to counter spell it. No, <laughs> no potato no. today. I mean, that makes sense. Like, that yeah. would be very problematic if that stayed in play. Can't, can't beat that card. <laughs> yeah, Christian's just taken one from his black vice for a few turns in a row. It's just getting squeezed. But he, yeah, okay, now he has a fourth mana, so I don't know if, if Ravenous Baylos or Blastoderms are in the, the future for Ryan. Yeah, likely. He'll be chaining those out, um, but I would assume he has a bunch in his hand. No. Oh, he's passing he's the, pass turn. the turn. So if he's not using, if he doesn't have anything to deploy on four mana... What are the other cards in his hand? Uh, he could have naturalizes. Okay. Right? Yep. Um, maybe he has more discard spells. He just wants to wait a little bit to. All right, there is a naturalize. Again. He's gonna natural... be pointed oh. at the black place. I don't want that. He must have. He must have multiples that like. Um... Yeah, he must be just jacked on naturalize effects right now. I mean, he, he does have two deeds in play. And we, now we see a bail right. Oh, maybe he was uh, playing around days. That he didn't want to he run. Playing around days. He could also be like just not wanting to tap all of his mana ever okay. against him. Because if he leaves one up, then Ryan's always in danger of him just drawing a second land and deeding away a stasis, right? Mm -hmm. But if he taps out, then it's a little bit safer for Ryan to put the stasis in play okay. as he, he'll have a lot more time to wait. So Thwart was the answer to Ravenous Bayloth. So the Bayloth doesn't come down. It's still countered. Who, like, is one player way ahead? I don't know. I feel like this game's still pretty I think close. Christian's a little ahead with the two deeds. I guess they're still, like, a bunch of cabal therapies that could be flashed back to like if we get to the point where he's drawing like wall of blossoms or something that mm -hmm. like ryan's gonna have a hard time winning the game and he also yeah. has to stay alive so i guess yeah that i guess that makes sense once the stasis is down there's not a lot that's really important to therapy out of your opponent's hand though either uh chain of vapor i think is like the only one that kind of comes into play because the timing yeah. of of playing that can be interesting Yeah, it can be really frustrating once the stasis comes down if you're rock because there's not a lot of what you can do to their hand. That's uh, effective. All right, big bailouts coming over here. All right, so Ryan will fall to 16, and another bailout is added. Maximum Bailoths. And a treetop village is added. So Christian now has access to plenty of mana. I think he's only got one card in his hand. Um, so kind of a turnaround of what, what it was four turns ago where Christian only had three lands for forever and a bunch of cards in hand. But from this position, I mean, it's tough for Ryan because like Stasis is his biggest answer to like resolve threats and there's already two deeds in play so it's like yeah i i'm trying to think what he would do who 
Ooh, we got a viewer from Singapore watching on the way to work. So thanks for tuning in. That's pretty cool that we, uh, we're international. So we're worldwide. Yeah. Yeah, so Christian's going to untap, and he could potentially attack for er, 11, just for with what's on board, thanks to Treetop Village. So Ryan potentially, I guess there is the ensnare that, we, that both players know about. Uh, yeah. That would buy some time. But, I mean, a turn so doesn't... Christian is going to okay. avoid activating a Treetop. Make him ensnare so he can get the three damage in if he does. So that like. makes sense. Yeah. Kind of splitting, hedging your bets in a, in a sense. But does he have a. This yeah, is a blast. blast I was going to say, it's a, it looks like a. What was that? Ravenous trap. Ba Ravenous Baloth trap is what I thought it was for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Not illegal Baloth. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right so ryan we know like he'll probably have to use the ensnare next turn he might get hit with a treetop village then but i i don't see what like what cards could he have he doesn't have hibernation he yeah he has to because the sequence normally he's got would be string ensnared. a lot of stuff together. He basically has to ensnare, play stasis, have a chain of vapor to save his stasis. But even if he did, like uh, Christian would just at end of end of Ryan's turn um, activate a deed for two, and right. then it, yeah, even if he, Ryan does have a chain of vapor, he gets to untap. Christian would get to untap. Yeah, I mean, he chain response to the deed. But... Yeah, but then Christian would get to untap and kill him. Yeah. So I I don't. Unless I'm overlooking a card that was in Ryan's list, I don't think he has any real way to to fight this. Yeah, it's it's, it's rough, looking rough for uh, the grandfather. Ryan will show his hand. It is a thwart, a chain of vapor, a black vice, and a forsaken city. And uh, Christian shows his hand of a, another Bayloth, but that one was not <laughs> needed. Uh, so Christian's going to take this thing down. He's going to beat Ryan. So it looks like Ryan's playoff chances, I believe, have been eliminated. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I looked at the permutations and I was trying to d determine if there was any way that Christian could make the playoffs if if he won and then both like uh mano if everyone else lost I'm but lost. I, I don't i don't think i think the tiebreakers don't work out in his favor so mm -hmm. I, th I think that's how i considered him eliminated so is tom four three now tom has yes tom is okay so so mano yeah i guess with tom of four three then yeah that definitely changed yeah. it so yeah so I think if I, if I lose to Mano, Mano could be four three as well. I get yes. knocked out. I think. Yeah, Mano has two remaining matches because he has to play against Ryan. I'm gonna move over and yeah, listen to our players. Hey guys. Hey there. Hey. We, we that saw, was a right good walloping, eh? I say we saw that's we how it's done, huh? We saw the frowny <laughs> face. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Moldify. I was I was pretty convinced uh, that he was going to run. I was running into goblins this time with okay. the the matchups and stuff, and uh, that's uh, that was a lot of uh, draw bads on both. You see, so, you like that gush? Was the was <laughs> gush into drawing right into the stasis that he names? Was the it's very very you, nice when you said you mulliganed, thinking that he was playing against goblins. Were the hands that you initially mulliganed because they were like... No, they were trash. Okay. Like, like with Stasis, it's... So if I know I'm playing against Discard, I'm not as dead set on getting keeping a hand with Stasis. It's more about, you know, can I play Magic with this uh, to get me to a point where I can get to the Stasis? A lot of other matchups, it's, it's like something super aggressive. It's kind of Stasis or Bust. 
Um, so it's, I kind of assumed he was going to be on goblins, but my <laughs> mulligan choices were not, uh, mm -hmm. based on that. I was almost sure you go to ban my rock. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Rock is, I think it's, it's good against uh, all your three decks. Uh, goblins, I don't know with uh, the survival, you have a lot of walls. Mm -hmm. Enchantress, you have the elephant grass, and it it depends if I start fast with like Yeah, I, I I put rock at like fifty fifty versus most stuff. So <laughs> yeah, so the rock what uh, is. This car <laughs> helps a lot. Yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think this is uh, my last game here. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say we were just talking about how I, I don't think there's a permutation for you to make it. And I think with Tom winning, I think I think uh, no, no, you're yeah. eliminated. So, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, but I, is there, I, I think we, is there anyone else you want to thank or you want to uh, shout out? I guess if this is the last time we're seeing yeah, either yeah. of you players. I, um, yeah. I want to thank you and Flint for the possibility to, to be here. It's an honor to, to be in the showcase and play with these amazing players. And thanks for the Argentina community. Uh, there was a cheer for me <laughs> in the comments in the in the stream. Um, I want to apologize for my bad English. I so... I don't think you need to apologize for that. I think I think your English has been great. I think you just yeah. I I would love to to do a commented and for the match, but yeah. I prefer not. <laughs> so, and the last, um, we will have uh, next year the our uh, championship, Primero Championship here in Argentina. So I hope you, some of you, can travel to here, and we'll meet in person. All right. And play. So Primero. That's a challenge to anyone. I think you could definitely the... count Aaron Dixon for yeah. sure. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's locked in okay. already. Yeah, we have good wine here. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Guys, and see you. Yeah, great, great game. You. Uh, Ryan, do you want to say it? Because I think I think you're out of the playoffs. As yeah, well, I so. guess this is probably it. Yeah. I didn't really prepare a speech. I, I wasn't planning on it. Uh, it all happening like this, but. Uh, you know, kind of off the cuff, I'd, uh, you know, I'd like to tell a story about when I was a, a little child, uh, you know, I picked up this game and no, it's, this is the best community. This is the best format. This is the best game. And yeah. uh, this is the best showcase for it all around. And I'm honored to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to thank everybody for everything, like literally. Um, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, Sorry. this format, this, this format is everything. It's the only format I play. Uh, I almost quit the game uh, two or three years ago. Uh, then I, a friend of mine introduced me to to this monstrosity. <laughs> <laughs> Jump back. So did, yeah. Did you put? Did you play a lot of tournaments back in the day, like by Grand Prix and Fortress and stuff? Yeah, I um, I play the most uh, all the standard, uh, a little bit standard, then uh, Legacy. Legacy a lot here. In Argentina, uh, but yeah, um, then I start working all the weekends, so I, I wasn't able to to play mm -hmm. tournament. So I start to sell the, the cards, and yeah, and then I gain again a, a day free on weekend, so I started to play premodern um, <laughs> here. Yeah. Well, we're glad that you were able to find pre-modern. And I, yeah, I think... definitely thank that yeah. friend of yours. That's yeah. Yeah. he's the man. Yeah. So. <laughs> thank you guys. See yep. you. All right. Saludos a la comunidad argentina. Nos vemos. Salud. <laughs> Bye. Thank you guys. All right. As we say goodbye to uh, Christian and Ryan, uh, BK, let's look ahead at where our schedules at. So we are going to see if we can get. Our next match between Aaron and Mike Flores up, and I guess it might depend on whether Flint is available because uh, we are running ahead of schedule. So if Flint's uh, not around, you know, I'll say. I could be, I be, I could be your Flint. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're I mean, gonna. I would love to comment that. Match. I guess <laughs> if there's anything else that you want to talk about right now, we can do that. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll we'll move to break. Um, if there's anything you want to bring up or anything you want to discuss. 
Um, I would like to announce, I'm, I'm about to do a post in the pre-modern group, but we're going to be doing one more big uh, pre-modern event this year for uh, at, at my store, Misty Modern Games, which you will be uh, doing some commentary on or bringing the, bringing the coverage through Cloud Goat Ranger. Uh, we're doing something I, I've, I've dubbed the Midwest Pre-Modern Championships for 2022. 2022. It's a little late notice, but I, I, I think, I think I'd like, I'd rather do a championship than no championship, you know? So, uh, and it's going to be a charity tournament. We're, um, we're looking at charity still. I, th I think we have it locked in, but, uh, yeah, we sh it should be a, should be a blast and should be really really cool tournament. Okay, come on down to Madison, December tenth. <laughs> Aaron has typed Wisconsin. I don't know if I can travel that far. I think it probably should be. I don't know if I can travel that close. I think it's probably what you need. <laughs> so, yeah, the date is December tenth. Is so yes. a, a month away. So, walk it off. <laughs> All right. Uh, so with that, we are going to get our players set up for our third round. We're going to have Aaron against Mike Flores and we'll take a quick break, but we will be back shortly. So sit tight. We'll have more pre-modern PSS for action coming up. <laughs> 